Okay, there's like normal fun days. Yes. And there's memorable days. Today is a historic day. Oh, yeah. yeah it really yeah. is because we have been invited to fly out on the planes that flew over Normandy. In fact, they just got back from the 75th anniversary. Mm -hmm. But we have to divide and conquer. You're That's going right. on. Placid Lassie. And I'm going on Miss Montana. I saw the nose painting. Right. It's super cute. Yeah. So Miss anyway, Montana is way over there at the vintage way. barn. And Carson and I are going in. Uh, Placid Lassie, which is right down here. So I'll see you up in the air in yes. formation. So hopefully I'll be right on your wing and then I can get some footage. That's right, I like you, babe. All right. <laughs> so that's where those, where those small airplanes are coming yeah. in like right there? Go up there and turn left. Yeah, that's These where these guys can follow us. Mm -hmm. We could go on to the taxi right over there. Mark. Hi, Mark. Hello, yeah, you know, nice yeah. to meet My you. My son, Carson. Carson. Hi, Carson, Eric. Nice to meet you. Yeah. Welcome, guys. So we got uh, four of you right now for the time being. Hi, guys. Nick. Hey, Nick, Mark. Nice to meet you, Mark. Hey, I'm Swain. Nick. Nice Swain? to meet you. Swain, yeah. Swain. Swain. Swain, nice to meet you. <laughs> Behind us is Placid Lassie, built in 1943 in Long Beach, California for $109,000. That's it? <laughs> Isn't that crazy? And the, I believe the way the story goes is that the crew and the pilot named the plane Placid Lassie and they named the, let's see, it'd be the, the left engine, Idling Addy, and the right engine, Eager Eileen. And it's just, a really cool, almost bizarre feeling to be next to a plane that flew in Normandy. It's like, like Trish said, it's historical, it's crazy. And then to think that we're gonna go flying it, it's crazy. Trish and Caleb are over in uh, Miss Montana, taking off at the vintage barn just down the way. And then once all the DC-3s get up in the air, we'll start going into formation. There are emergency exits on both sides. They're signed over there. You turn the handle counterclockwise. Push, push it out and leave the airplane. It's also emergency exit up above over there. So John's in the left seat, I'm in the right seat. Uh, Dicko is over here, he's gonna be in the jump seat and uh, we are gonna go have some fun. Great. We'll see, we're gonna be doing a little bit of formation work. Um, you'll, so you'll see a couple airplanes off our wing, hopefully. Yeah. And uh, then we're gonna come back here and enjoy the Is this a, did I understand this is a practice flight? This is a practice flight. So for? So we're going to be doing, uh, we're going to be flying the air show tomorrow, Saturday, gotcha. Friday and Saturday. Okay. And so, a couple, you know, just to kind of practice proficiency flights gotcha. uh, to get to get get the cobwebs out and get everybody uh, awesome uh, up to up to speed before we fly in front of the crowd. <laughs> awesome. All right.
sort of thing you just want to use. You got to really kind of ride I, right at the yeah, edge of it. I tried to do a level turn in the brake and then start the descent, but I actually lost 100 feet in the brake, corrected that, which mm -hmm. I should have just accepted it. Well, what I would do uh, also on something like that where we're so high on the brake, is load it up. Load oh, it up. Yeah. To, yeah, you just you know haul it over and load it up, and then load a G on it, and then the, then the speed will bleed off. The speed right. bleeds right off right there. Yeah. Hello. Hello. How was your flight? Uh, on a scale yes. of one, a scale of one to ten, really, come on, tell me. Like a twenty. It's crazy, wasn't it? It was amazing. It was totally amazing. But there were so many emotions. Like when I was sitting there, I was thinking, okay, so the courage that sat on these planes yeah. that flew over these enemy waters and then were dropped out of the plane. Yes. And you don't know what's going to happen after that. You just like let your training kick in. Yeah. And then I thought like my great grandfather lost his life in World War II. Yeah. Your great, your grandfather was in World War One. I. I know. Like just what, the only thing that could come to mind was like go fast. If you go alone, you go fast. And if you go as a group, you go far. Yeah. And I was just thinking when we were flying, in our little, what's it called? Formation. When we were flying in our formation, I was just thinking of all the men that were teamed up together and working together, especially with the Air Canada plane next to us. Oh yeah. All the different countries that came together. Yes. It was, that was amazing. By the mere fist of shame, you heard it all before, but let me try to explain. By mere fist to shame means that you're great. Shame is such an old brain, and yet I should explain. It means I'm ready for your name. Plug your ears, folks, or you are losing your hearing here. Before we get there, tell everyone what we're doing. We are going to see the night air show. Are you ready for the night air show? I guess there's going to be drones, fireworks, all kinds of craziness. Oh man, what are you doing, Trish? I'm just cleaning off the grill. It's getting crazy over here. I know. You gotta be careful you don't burn yourself though. Look at these guys, watch. Look at how he stalls out. Everywhere around here. Although the best asparagus was 
when they gave it to us on the Harvest Host location at that winery. Oh, it yeah. It smelled so good. It smelled like dill. Oh, yeah. Yeah. This does not smell like dill. <laughs> but I'll put some stuff in it. Hi, Charlie. The balcony is in its true glory right now. The whole we, rig is. Yeah, we don't have to be on the ground. It's all kind of muddy and uneven. So we get to set up our chairs here, look at the planes. The sun is not going directly into either one of our windows. It's amazing. Could not be the furthest point from the air show. I mean, we are in, at this point, we are in last position for sights. Hey, the last shall be first and the first shall be last. Well, that is a good point because we have strategically placed ourselves within 10 feet of the exit on the driest part of the place we could find. Yeah, No. so we take a turn right here, we're on a regular road and a direct route out. Those Bible quotes ain't faking me, Mom. We are far away, okay? <laughs> All right, so how did we end up in the boonies at Oshkosh, at Air Venture? Like, when you look at the Camp Schuler, that's the name of the RV park at Oshkosh, yeah. or at Air Venture, when you look at the map, we're not even we're not even on the map. That's right. The site that we got is like under a logo in the lower right hand corner. Off to the way, way, the way, way side. Way, way, way side. side. So if you are doing Oshkosh for the very first time, we wanted to give you like the five feeler questions. This is just like the top level. You're gonna need to go much deeper to really understand Oshkosh and it might even take you multiple years. Yeah. But if you've never been, Here's a few things that we would have loved some answers to. Yes, what are our five things we wanted okay, to Okay, so chat like, about? should you reserve a site? How does the RV park work? Like, how's it divided up? Mm -hmm. What do you do when you arrive? When should you arrive? Yes. How do you get around? That is, that's yes. a funny one. Uh, and how long should you stay? We thought this might be helpful. If you've never been to AirVenture before and you plan on arriving in an RV, this would help get you a little bit of a jump start. Yeah. I'll say after you attend once, you'll pretty much be an expert. You'll totally. have the whole thing locked down. But if you've never been before and you arrive like we did, it's essentially a city. Mm -hmm. It's a city that pops up with thousands of RVs and of thousands of planes and the lines are everywhere. Even even all the department stores and the grocery yeah. stores, everything around Oshkosh is There's maxed out. Over six hundred thousand people. There's over two thousand planes that are like in the air show. Yeah. And then there's ten thousand aircraft that come yes. in. Yeah, it's ten thousand aircraft. And the air tower that's mm -hmm. there mm -hmm. for that week is the busiest air tower in the world. Which of course was managed and and by uh, one of a, a KYD insider. Yes. Pretty cool. Yes. Yeah, so, so that gives you some perspective of how yeah. busy this it's is. It's immediately fun even being in the town because you're grocery shopping and there's like sometimes like dozens of planes all in formation going over your head. So it's fun to be there immediately, but it also it's also very overwhelming. Yeah. Place to live. Yeah. I mean you're gonna see going over there. Uh, really I, I'm right I'm I'm trying to stay positive. Yeah. Honestly. Because you, there's a lot of lines. I mean, you get in the line to get into Camp Schuler, and then you get in a line to register, and then you get in a line to f find the, sh uh, the site, find your site. Mm -hmm. And so we thought, let, let's just share with you some information just so that you know what to expect, and some tips. Okay. I would say, straight out of the gate, if you've never been before, bring patience. Take a deep breath mm -hmm. because it's so easy. I think you mentioned like survival of the fittest. <laughs> yes. It's kind like every man like for themselves kind, kind of, of thing. Like when you get there, it's just, it can be like, all right, I don't know where to go to register. Mm -hmm. I don't know which line in my long RV I should be in. Right. And then even when you do get a site, you don't know exactly where to go to set up and then it can be overwhelming. So just know that- Everything's gonna be all right. You're gonna get, you will eventually find out where you're going to camp. Yes. You'll eventually pick a site mm -hmm. and you'll get detached and the slides will go out if you have them mm -hmm. and the awnings will go out and your chairs will go out and it'll all be fine. Right. Well, the funniest <laughs> thing I think is we're pulling in when we finally got some semblance of which direction to even go and then this lady is yelling at us and she's like, if you get stuck, it's a hundred dollars to get pulled out. And I look at Mark, I'm like, well, that's cheaper than we're used to. Yeah, we, we've paid a lot more than that. <laughs> but that's the general, like you're kind of getting 
orders kind of thrown at you and so anyway so just bring your patience look at it like it's a comedy routine and just <laughs> laugh at what's yes. going on around you okay so, so uh, let's talk about the site that we ended up getting so we ended up just so what happened is once we get in and we registered mm -hmm. for a site just a dry camping site mm -hmm. uh, by the way should you make a reservation if you would like water and electric mm -hmm. you'll need to make a reservation in advance and you start paying for that site the day you reserve the site at sixty-seven dollars a night. They pretty much open it at a certain time frame, and then and then the moment that you reserve a site, you start paying that day, sixty-seven a night. So if you want to reserve a site three weeks in advance, you're paying for three weeks all the way through the end. If you want to take your chances and wait until about a week before, they'll start going up, and then you buy, you start paying. Yeah. Do you need water and electric? I mean, if you need water and electric, you you need water and electric, but you're mm -hmm. going to pay for it. If you don't, and we didn't, then I don't think you need to make a reservation at all. Don't worry about it. There right. is plenty of room. There but, were people in tents around us. Yeah. There's outhouses and there are um, showers in field. Yes. So you'd have to walk really far for them. But yeah. anyway, but they are available to you. There's also places to do your laundry and there's mm -hmm. places to get little odds and ends necessities like yeah. milk and bread and ice. It's a city. It's a, it's a city. So mm -hmm. you don't have to leave if you don't want to. All right. Let's talk about how Camp Schuler, that's the name of the RV park at Oshkosh. That's the name of it. So it's broken up into the water and electric that we've talked about. Mm -hmm. And then they have 24 hour generator areas. Yes. They have generator hour areas, mm -hmm. you know, like you run your generator in certain times. They have no generator areas, which is just mainly tents. Yes. And then they have wherever we stayed, which was <laughs> like, <laughs> like hardly even on the map. Yeah. On, not the on the map. The place but, over. But I will say worked out pretty well. Mm -hmm. We were right next to the exit so mm -hmm. that we could leave anytime we want. We felt like even though we were on grass. We never waited in lines like no. behind a bus or behind anything. It was just like zip, zip. Yeah. When spot. we wanted to go to the air show, we just took this little back road all the way into the air show. It was, about, it was about half a mile walk. So it was about, so we were walking a mile a day, mm -hmm. less the air show. So we we're probably walking three to four miles a day, which, right. we, which we enjoyed. Sounds weird. And then, <laughs> um, and then what else was I going to say about that? Um, oh, and we were on high ground. So if it rained, mm -hmm. we were fairly confident that we could get out. Although we were a little scared. So we left early. So, cause yeah. that rain was coming in and we were like, mm, we're yeah, not going to take all. our chances. So we now left. when we were driving through Camp Schuler and there were all these dirt roads everywhere and they did a pretty good job wetting them down to make mm -hmm. sure to keep the dust down. But it was like, it was the nucleus of Camp Schuler. Yes, there was just dust. It like, was a lot of activity. And so we actually elected to just say, look, if we can't have the perfect location site, let's just go outside out. and let's just stay out of the chaos. I actually, in hindsight, I'd do the same thing again. Yeah, we've so we've covered, you know, should you reserve a site? Mm -hmm. If you want to, it's possible. And they're super nice. They're yes. super helpful mm -hmm. on the phone. Um, how does it work? We've kind of divided it up for you. Yep. That's how it works. And then uh, what happens when you arrive? So when you arrive, you'll see this long, long RV line. And so you're going to wait, you're in a park. It's going to feel like you're parked in an RV line to come in to register. Mm -hmm. And then maybe if you're with a spouse or, or a partner or a friend, then the other person can go and start waiting in the line to register. So by the time that your RV makes it to the front of the line, whomever you're with, has made it to the front of the registration line so that you can then get a ticket to go into Camp Schuler. Ride and conquer. Okay, and then if you're dry camping, then you just keep driving through the RV park area looking for your, like a dry camping area or mm -hmm. a generator hours area and just finding an open site. It's pretty much every man for themselves just looking for a site. There is a place to dump. There is a place mm -hmm. to get water. You can get dumped out too. Someone will come to you. You can, I think it was like $45 or mm -hmm. something. So there's that. Yes. Um, here's a tip. You do, if you've never been before, and maybe if you, if you have been before, strongly recommend not arriving at night. Yes. Okay, it's confusing enough with all the patience in the world mm -hmm. arriving in the daytime. I couldn't imagine at night. Okay, no. so. And you can't see the muddy areas. And so you really don't want to get stuck. There were whole sections that actually looked very desirable to camp in, but nobody was there because it was just a mud yeah, pit. Yeah. So if you're coming in at night, you can't really see, oh, the, the ground is really you know yeah. muddy over there or darker over there. I should go over here. So daytime yeah. is best. Okay, uh, number four on our list is how do you get around? So if you have, especially if you park where we did, if you have bikes or anything, like, they don't allow like 
Well, they do allow them. motorized. Yeah. I don't know. The website says something about like not prohibit, not having like everything outside of the actual air show is oh, allowed. That's true. Yeah, yeah. Those yeah. streets, there were golf carts. There yeah. were, mm -hmm. and you'll see the craziest motorcycles that have been retrofitted yes. to fit like an entire family yes, on yes, one yes, vehicle. Yes. So uh, anyway, so just watching that alone yeah. is hilarious. But, but if, they have places to park everything if, before you walk in the gates. If you have a bike or you have a golf cart, definitely this is where you want to bring it because mm -hmm. if we would have had bikes, it would have been easier. We were, probably would have gone to the show more often mm -hmm. because we could have just gone over there but because it was a half a mile walk we were looking because we could see right off of our deck of the show and we were like, that looked pretty fun it's a half hour to walk there so <laughs> right. well not a half hour but you know by the time we get there yeah. and back okay so that's about how to get around and then how long should you stay so you know is we're aviation enthusiasts but it's not like we're in the aviation business mm -hmm. um so, and it's more of a convention than an yes, air show. Yes. There are things going on from 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. Yeah. on the hour mm -hmm. every single day. So for kids, teens, adults, like there's, yeah, there's air, kids there's adventure. airplane making mm -hmm. for kids, and then there's airplane making for adults, and it says no kids allowed. Yeah. So like, oh, yeah, there's, yes, yeah. there's serious things going on all the time, and yeah. education renewal hours, and oh, and the seminars, vendors. and 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 there's vendors and there's static displays. So if you're in the aviation business. There's plenty to do. I think a lot of people go because they meet friends there mm -hmm. and they're having a great time and then they all decide, hey, let's go to the air show like one day. I think right. the, I think the veterans pick a day that they go. And I would say if there is a if there's an air show to go, it would be the night show. Oh. And so we kind of allocated best. Wednesday to go to the daytime and then just go right into the evening, which was a lot of air show. Yes. But it was it was a lot of fun. And you saw I, I provided kind of like a glimpse of what it would be like to go there. Yeah. And I also learned how to record an air show. If I were to do it again, it would be a much different video. Uh -huh. Because it actually takes a bit of experience to know what's coming, how, what's to, going. how to record. I do it a little bit differently. But I think you got a sense for what it was like. And of course the DC-3 or the C C-47 flight for us was so special. Okay, so that's just a little glimpse of what you might need to know being an air venture RV newbie. <laughs> I will say this season we've been using the RV to go to a lot of various events and Very we've been dry cool. camping and it's been awesome. It's just been really neat to use the RV in that capacity because that's new for us. Mm -hmm. And I mean, that's how some people only use their RV and smart I can see people. why. Very yes. smart. Yes. Yes. Anyhow, so if you're new here, click the subscribe button. We release a new video every Sunday at 7 and there's mm -hmm. still lots more to come in the heartland. After this, we ended up making our way up to the Lumberjack Festival. We have other upgrades. We're going to do the F-450 and then we still yet to do an RV tour. So lots of heartland left mm -hmm. this season. Yes. Anything you want to mention? Well, just you know, going to these big shows, kind of dicing them up and figuring out, okay, my number one thing is to be patient. My mm -hmm. number one, two thing is just to get my feet on the ground and then learn, write something down. If you learn something, you plan to go back to the show. Yeah. When you're there, write down the things that you loved and the things that did not work out. Mm -hmm. Maybe some of the foods that you loved or, you know, you never want to bring again because mm -hmm. it was too much hassle. Um, yeah. That way you don't have to feel like you have to remember all this stuff. You can just go back and go, okay, what was my highlight reel of yeah. Oshkosh? And um, and it will be successful for you because it really is a tailor-made experience. Yeah, it's whatever you want to make of it. If you That's want true. it to be all watching airplanes, you can do that. If you want it to go see all, all the static, yeah. yes. If you want to do meet and greets, think about all the planes that were parked all over the ground and people had their tents. Yeah, everybody was super excited to oh, talk yeah. about their planes. Oh, yeah. So you could make a bazillion friends. So mm -hmm. however you want to tailor make this experience, you should do it. And like I said sometimes you pull into an RV park and it just doesn't seem that desirable and the site that we get just isn't the kind of site that we like. Mm -hmm. Once you get detached and you get set up and the awnings come out, it's fine. And so I think we've realized that now. It's easy yeah. to become like a perfectionist on, well, I don't want this site, I want that site. But, you know, at the end of the day, it's going out and it's making memories. You and, gotta just roll with it. And you gotta roll with it. Yes. All right, that's it for this week. We're glad you're here and we'll catch you next Sunday. Bye.